on to the fifth exercise uh, in our series. So the first four share similar principles. They're about moving the center up and down, structuring the body in the correct way, um, and, and governing certain directions and movements of chi inside the body. Five, six, seven, eight are a little bit different, a little bit more complicated, I guess, in some ways. Um, but they, they all have very important roles. So the fifth one, once again, we begin from the, the Wuji posture that we finished the last exercise in. Okay, then the next thing I do is I bring my hands up and I settle them in front of the, the middle of the body at about the height of the solar plexus or the level of the diaphragm. Okay, my right hand is up, my left hand is down. To be honest, realistically, it does matter directions, which hand is on the outside and for male and female things like this at later stages in Qigong. Um, but right now in the beginning stages, uh, while you're still learning the foundations and the fundamentals, it's not really that important here. Yeah? But we do begin with the right hand up, left hand down for, for uh, standardization reasons. Yeah? The arms are quite far from the body. The elbow is not on my center line. It is out so that the scapula is sat proper, properly onto my back. It's about a hand's thickness uh, yeah, between my thumb and my little finger, between the elbow uh, and the ribcage making sure that everything around here is still sat properly. You can see if I bring my elbows back, everything here starts to sit differently and my body starts to arch. We don't really want that. Yeah, we want to maintain all of our uh, alignment integrity. I'm settled down into my usual position. Okay, I'm on the closed position, not up, closed. So central gravity in the lower Dantian region. Okay, so simply I push the left hand down as the right hand goes up, same time, same time, till one is higher than the head, and the other one is about at the level of the hips here, yeah, but it'll vary a little bit depending upon the length of your arms. Basically what is important is my shoulders do not tip, okay, that's first, so if I do this and the body tips, that's too much, okay, I'm keeping them so my shoulders are level, hips are level, body not tipping, okay. The palm that's going down must always face to the floor, it cannot change. Yeah, I cannot turn it like this. The palms must be facing the right way. Lao Gong of my left hand down, Lao Gong of my right hand up. Okay, till I get to the position where one is high to the hips, one high to the head. Okay, then I turn the hands over. Yeah, see I don't change height in the body. I bring them back in towards the center and then I change them. So now the other hand is up, other hand is down. Then I turn them, then I bring them in towards the center, and I basically just repeat this sequence, okay? It has a few very important functions, which I'll outline in a second. But first of all, I just make sure you understand uh, the alignments for the exercise, okay? So as I said before, shoulders cannot tip, okay? We must keep them level. When they're moving up and down, see they're moving on a line, on a line, as in they're not moving back in towards my body or further away. Yeah, and keeping them almost as if there's a bar through my hand, okay, like a pole dancing bar. My hand is sliding down that bar, yeah, changing, turning the hands over like so. When I turn them, okay, they turn around the, the middle finger, yeah. So what I mean by that is as if there's a bar through my middle finger, and when I turn the hands, it's the middle finger that turns them like a pivot before it changes direction, yeah? So I get to the top, and then the middle finger turns, and then I'm changing, okay? Then it's the middle finger. That's very important. In the beginning, you won't feel the reason why, but after a while, you realize that the middle finger has a very strong collection, connection to the center of the body. I mean, if we want to understand how um, hand shapes, fingers, and the body connect together, we only have to look at mudras, you know? I mean, they're essentially, um, attunement exercises using the fingers to connect into the middle of the body. So even though we're not using a mudra, we're still using similar principles. But I'm turning around this middle finger because it has a strong connection to the inside of the body. Each of the fingers has a connection to different energy centers and channels within the system. And we're primarily concerned with this exercise about centralizing everything. Centralizing the chi, centralizing the alignment, centralizing the location, the dantian. So the middle finger is one we use, yeah. The hands must also stay on vertical lines, yeah? So they cannot do this. 
and separate. Yeah, you'll see this a lot when people are learning sex ed. They'll start doing this. Right? It must be on this line. So they're, they're coming through two vertical lines to the left and right side of my torso. Okay. I breathe in as the hands come towards the center. Then I breathe out as they move away from me. Then I turn them. Then I breathe in and out as they move away from here. Then I turn them. And I breathe in, and out, and you move away from me. And just like the other exercises, the speed of the exercise will slow down, or speed up, I suppose, depending upon the length of your lung capacity. So your breathing, how long is your breathing? That's what dictates uh, the speed of the movement through the exercise, okay? Dictating the speed of the movement through the exercise. So my personal speed, will slow down quite a lot to match my breathing. But yours will adjust to accompany yours. The breathing never wants to be forced. You're never trying to force it longer. I'm just relaxing more and more and more and the breathing will get longer and longer of its own accord. Yeah. So, what is this exercise for? <laughs> Essentially, when I'm pushing out, okay, I'm, it's almost as if I'm stretching the chi two different directions. And eventually, what will happen, once you've done enough training, is the Dantian is influenced by the stretch and it makes a little roll, a little turnover. Something that's often missed in Qigong is people understand the Dantian and building it and everything like this, but the Dantian must mobilize. Okay? If it does not mobilize within this part of the body, if the center cannot turn, then the Qi cannot be directed through the body. They talk about it being like a, a wheel that pushes and directs Qi through the system. Yeah? When I'm making uh, these movements, when I get to the edge, if you're at the stage where you do not have enough chi in the Dantian or the Dantian is not consolidated, then very little will happen. But if you're at the stage where enough chi has been built, okay, then essentially the idea is to connect the movement of the hands to the center. So when I reach the edges, the Dantian makes a little turn. Yeah? And if I let this happen, when I get to the edge, you'll see the Dantian. You can just see my abdomen starting to move, hopefully. Yeah, so when I get to the edge, Dantian just makes a little turn. My insides feel like they roll over. Yeah? What is important though, uh, is that you don't make this movement. I don't roll my Dantian, I don't roll my abdomen or anything. This is another big error. The Dantian must be left to its own devices. We put certain um, qualities, certain variables in place. Um, so that what happens is then, when the chi moves enough, then the Dantian rolls. Yeah, so the exercise itself should be enough. I stretch everything out. When I get to the edge, the edge, see, if I hold it, see my Dantian's not comfortable. See my body twitching? It wants to turn. As soon as I turn the hands, then the Dantian rolls. Okay, so in this exercise, when I'm moving, the rolling of the Dantian is what does the work for me. The rolling of the Dantian. Turns everything over, yeah? All I'm doing is stretching the hands, pushing them two different directions as I combine it with my breathing, okay? Staying with the center of gravity on the Dantian. And those little movements you might be able to see in my body, I don't know if the camera picks them up or not, um, is the influence of the Dantian moving uh, under direction of the movement of the hands, yeah? It's the same with all of these Qigong. People often think the center controls the hands. That's more like a Tai Chi principle. Um, in actual fact, in Qigong, it's the opposite. The hands control the center. And I know when I say that, a lot of people won't like it. They'll be like, no, no, the center controls the hands. The center controls the hands. No, it's the other way. The inside of the body, okay, we're trying to get the Qi to do a certain thing. Okay, when I squeeze my hands like this, it's to influence the Qi on the area, inside my abdomen. When I turn the hands like this, it's once again to govern the flow of Qi in this region. When I take my hands up and down, it's to control chi inside the center of the body. Okay? It's not the body controlling the hands. In Qigong, we're not worried what happens with the hands. We're not trying to do hours and hours, months and months, years and years of practice to get really efficient hands. We're trying to get really efficient circulations and orbits and chi building up inside the center of the torso. We're not trying to hit people with it, so we don't need power. We're not trying to get connected power from the center like in martial arts. Instead, we're just trying to build this quality in here. So my hands direct what happens inside. So when I take my hands to the outside, the stretch of the chi, governed by the movements of the hands, is what turns the Dantian over. But it will take a little while, 
for you to get there, I would imagine. So this is the fifth exercise, yeah? This one is uh, confusingly called the uh, swimming dragon, okay? I say confusing because there's lots of other exercises called swimming dragon too. Um, I can think of at least four or five different exercises from different systems with the same name. The names are usually codes. Uh, swimming implies water, okay? Uh, basically means this region of the body. Yeah, they talk about this being the water region, this being the earth region, this being the fire region, and so on. There's different regions of the body uh, in Qigong, a little different from Chinese medicine theory, but but similar. The water region, okay, swimming means that the water region should move. Okay, when you're in water and you swim, you're moving. Dragon always implies the spine. Yeah, whenever they see dragon, they mean the spine is involved somewhere, because when your spine starts to undulate under the force of the qi, then it looks supposedly, I don't know, I've never seen a dragon of it. It looks like a um, a dragon flying through the clouds. Okay, use your imagination. So, swimming dragon implies the water region starts to move and this causes the spine to undulate, which you can see inside my body. See, the spine starts to move under the influence of the exercise. Okay, the names, the codes of the names contain most of the meaning for how the exercise works, if you understand it. Whenever you hear dragons, spine. Whenever you hear water, kidneys, dantian, lower abdomen. So, they come in. Fire, chest region, heart, emotions. So pushing, letting the hands influence inside of the body under the force of this exercise. When you've done enough, we just turn the hands back over and we return, as always, to Wuji, where we hang out for a few minutes, let the body finish processing anything it might need to do, breathe, be aware of the body and the Dantian, and then just hang out a little while before we move on to the next exercise.